Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 paper from the International A Level and Excel exam. And this question here, we have got this sketch of a curve which has the equation y equals a modulus of, and then you have 2 minus 4 times lin of x plus 1, um, and x is greater than k. Right, the, the domain of this function is x is greater than k. So I've just taken a copy of that sketch, put it down here so we can see what's happening. It says where k is a constant, given that the curve has an asymptote at x equals k, cuts the y-axis at the point A, meets the x-axis at the point B, as shown in figure 2, first of all state the value of k. Now k is the asymptote, which is the line which the curve can never touch. And what we know is that you can never have um, a negative value inside the lin function, right? So if you have the lin of something, okay, then that thing must be greater than zero if you don't have the modulus sign. So here we have the lin of, you got x plus one, all right? So x plus one must be greater than zero. So x must be greater than minus one. So that means the asymptote here, is x equals negative 1. That's the asymptote. If you put negative 1 in, in here, then this will become undefined because you have lin of 0, which will be undefined. So x equals negative 1. Simple as that. That's the answer to A. Very simple. It just says state, one mark, no need to show any steps, not even write any of those things down. That's just for your explanation. And there's your answer to part A. Okay, now for part B. It says, find the y coordinates of A. So A is where it hits the y axis. So we know for every type of function, where does it hit the y-axis? Where does something hit the y-axis when x equals 0? Where does it hit the x-axis when y equals 0? So the x-axis is when x equals 0. So part 1 first, we're going to replace x with 0. So we have the y-coordinate of a is going to be y equals the modulus of 2 minus 4 times the lin of, we're going to put x equals 0. So you have 0 plus 1. Okay, and sorry, that's supposed to be in brackets. That's a normal bracket there. Okay. So you end up with y equals the modulus of 2 minus 4 times lin of 1. Now we know that the lin of 1 is 0. Okay, so you end up with y equals the modulus of 2, which is 2. So the y coordinate of A is equal to 2. And then we got to find the y coordinate of B. Okay, now we know that something crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. So we're going to take the equation. Just move it down here so we can see it. We're going to equate this to 0. y has to equal 0. So we have the modulus of 2 minus 4 times the lin of x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that means 2 minus 4 times the lin of x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so we can um, rearrange this equation. 2 equals 4 times the lin of x plus 1. So we can say that a half, 2 divided by 4, equals the lin of x plus 1. I want to write what x is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in an index form. I know that the log of a log to the base a of b equals c is the same as saying a to the power of c equals b. So the, this is the... Um, the this is the base, this is the power, this is the answer. So here, lin, remember, lin, okay, lin of A means log to the base E of A, right? So here we can say log to the base E of X plus 1. So this is E to the power of a half is equal to X plus 1. Therefore, we can say X is equal to E to the power of a half minus 1. That's the X coordinate of the point where it hits the X axis, which they've called B. So the x coordinate of b and that answers this question there's a y coordinate of a and here is the exact x coordinate of b we've written in exact form we haven't rounded it to any decimal point so there's the answer to part b now for part c it says using algebra and showing you're working find the set of values for which y equal or the 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 function the modulus of 2 minus 4 lin x plus 1 is greater than 3. 
Okay, so we know that this is 2. Okay, and it's greater than 3. So we can say that if we draw the line y equals 3, sorry about that once again. If we draw the line y equals 3, we can see where they're equal to each other. So let me say I draw the line y equals 3 over here. Let's say that's y equals 3. Let's make it a bit thinner. It looks a bit too thick there. Okay, let's say that's y equals 3. That's the line y equals 3. Now this is where the two are equal to each other. And where is this curve greater than 3? Well, from this point onwards. So if I find what that point is, that will be one of my answers. Okay, so from this point, okay, let me call that um, the point, let me call that, you know, um, let's say Q, okay, let's say that's the X coordinate of Q, this is the point Q, that's the X coordinate of Q. We can see that the curve that we're looking at, which is this modulus curve, is greater than the line y equals 3 is greater than 3, its value would be greater than 3, when xq is greater than, or when when x is greater than xq, the x coordinate of this point, okay? When x is greater than this value here, the curve here will be above, okay, y equals 3. And also we can see, let's call this the point p, okay, and this is going to be the x coordinate of p. We can see that when the when x is less than when um, x is less than xp, okay, when it's less than this value, again, the curve is going to be higher than the line, all right? However, we can see here that this is the point minus 1, all right? And you can't say that it's really higher than that curve in this area here because it doesn't actually exist there. So we, we should really put minus x, um, x, the curve is greater than the line between minus 1, greater than minus 1, up to xp, including xp. Uh, greater than no we don't put the equal sign because it says greater than okay not equal to so we need to find therefore the points p and q we need to find p and q if we find p and q we can then write the inequality with the x coordinate of p and the x coordinate of q and that will be our answer so how do we find p and q well we can solve the equation the modulus of 2 minus 4 times the lin of x plus 1 is equal to z equal to three not zero equal to three okay so we need to solve this equation okay so we can solve this equation um, we can get two branches we can say okay either this is equal to positive three which is two minus four times lin of the modulus or of x plus one sorry is equal to three or we can say that two minus four lin of x plus 1 equals negative 3. Okay, we can do it in two ways. Okay, um, so these are the two ways we can do it. Let's make clear that this is not a 12, this is a modulus sign. Okay, so those two branches will produce those two solutions. Okay, could we could have, if we wanted to, um, we could have, if you want to, wanted to, thought about you know these two branches separately one being the positive um, argument and the other one being the negative argument so we could have said 2 minus 4 lin x plus 1 equals 3 and we could have said 4 lin x plus 1 minus 2 equals 3 and we could have solved them separately they'll give it the same two answers as these two okay that's also possible by saying okay we want to see one of them the positive argument the other one the negative argument but either way is fine so now I think this is particularly easy in this question. We can see that this line will hit the curve in both places. There's no false solutions there. So we should get the proper answer in in each of these cases. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation. So I'm going to say minus 4 lin of x plus 1 equals, that's going to be 3 minus 2, which is 1. So we can say lin of x plus 1 is equal to minus a quarter. So remember, this is like log to the base e. Okay, remember we have log to the base a of b equals c can be rewritten as a to the power of c equals b. a to the power of c equals b. So this is log to the base e, so it's e to the power of negative a quarter is equal to x plus 1. So we can say x is equal to e to the power of negative a quarter minus 1. 
Okay, and that's one answer. And the other answer is going to be, if you rearrange this, you have minus 4 lin of x plus 1 is equal to minus 3 minus 2, which is minus 5. Dividing by 4, you have lin, lin of x plus 1 is equal to minus 5 divided by minus 4, which is 5 over 4. So we have e to the power of 5 over 4 equals x plus 1. So x is going to be e to the power of 5 over 4 minus 1. So one of these is going to be the positive value and the other one's going to be the negative value. If this one looks like it's going to be the negative value and we can confirm that. We can do e to the power of um, e to the power of negative 0 0.25 um, and then take away 1. That's going to be a negative value. So this is a negative value here and therefore this is the positive value. So we can say that the x coordinate of what I've called p is e to the power of minus a quarter minus one and the x coordinate of what I've called q is e to the power of five over four minus one. So therefore our inequality is going to be on this side of p or between minus one. So you have between minus one, okay, um, x has to be between minus one and e to the power of minus a quarter, okay, minus one. That's one solution. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do it, I'll write it together. So that's part of the solution. It's not the whole solution, it's part of the solution. Okay, and we can also say, or we're going to have when x is greater than um, this, this value of q, which is x q e to the power of 5 over 4 minus 1. So we can say when x is greater than e to the power of 5 over 4 minus 1. Okay, so there we have the answer to this question all right so um yeah that's it says greater than so we don't put the equal sign if it says greater than or equal to we'll put the equal sign on this part and that part but this this part here minus one won't have the equal sign all right so there's the answer to our question question number nine is there another part to this question let's have a look nope that's it okay so that concludes question number nine from the paper October 2023, Pure Mathematics P3. Other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere on the screen over here. At the end of the video, you'll also find here a link to um, um, the playlist, which is dealing with the topic of modulus functions. Okay, and then I'll also put a playlist here dealing with logarithms. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.